What is up my little year three buddies? Today I've got a brand new lesson for us. We're gonna be looking at fractions and we're gonna cover everything that you need to know about fractions in year three to be the best in your class. Today we're gonna to have a look at an introduction to fractions, looking at tenths and where it sits on the place value chart. Then we'll look at some common fractions that you should be able to easily recognize. Then we'll have a look at fractions of amounts in both unit fractions and non-unit fractions and learn exactly what that means before looking at equivalent fractions and then adding and subtracting fractions. And then towards the end, we'll have a look at ordering and comparing fractions. And then we'll look at some fraction word problems for you to try and solve as well. So let's waste no time. Let's jump in to lesson one. Okay, well, what do we need to remember today? We need to remember that fractions are just part of a whole. So what does that mean? Well, we can look at it like this with our place value chart. Hopefully we've seen a place value chart like this before with ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands, etc. But where is the place for our fractions? Well, our place for our fractions actually comes after the ones. Because remember, a fraction is smaller than one. It's a part of one. So we would end up having to put this extra section that we will then call tenths. And don't forget, we would need our decimal place between them. This decimal point shows that we're now less than one and we're into fractions. And the reason it's tenths is because if we think about it, Everything going positive across our place value is multiplied by 10. So 1 to 10, 10 to 100, and 100 to 1,000. They're all multiplied by 10. So everything coming down the place value chart is divided by 10. So 1,000 down to 100 is divided by 10. 100 down to 10 is divided by 10. 10 down to 1 is divided by 10. And therefore, 1 divided by 10 equals tenths. So our new column is the tenths column. Now let's have a look at it another way. This is my 1. I have 1 bar of chocolate. So at the minute, I have a whole 1. However, we can see that it's been cut into 10 even pieces. I have... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So I have 10 equal pieces. So therefore, one of these pieces is worth 1 tenth. Or in other words, we can write it into our fractions. We split our whole into 10. So the number on the bottom would be a 10. And I have only one of them, so I have one tenth. Now at this point, it's quite important to learn what we call these different numbers. The number on the top is the numerator, and the number on the bottom we call the denominator. And their jobs are pretty important. The number on the bottom shows how many we've split our whole bar into, in this case we split it into 10, and the numerator, the number at the top, shows how many we're focusing on, how many we're looking at. In this case, it would be 1. So what would I have if I actually shaded another couple of these sections up? Well, I had 1 tenth, this one here. Then I had another tenth, and then I had another tenth. So all together, I have what? Well, I can see I have one, two, three, and we still have 10 sections to our chocolate bar, so my denominator is still 10. So here I have three tenths. So if we were to look at the individual parts, here we can see I have one tenth of my original chocolate bar. Now I have two tenths, then three tenths, then four tenths, then five tenths. We can see we're counting up in tenths. Six tenths, seven tenths, 
8 tenths, 9 tenths, and then finally 10 tenths, or in other words, 1. Because 10 tenths makes back up our original 1 chocolate bar. So 10 tenths is equivalent or the same as saying 1. So looking back at our place value chart, what we have to understand for this lesson is that this extra column now, our tenths column, is a fraction. It's part of 1. So if I had 1 whole, but I split it into 10 pieces, each piece would be worth 1 tenth. Or in other words, a 1 in my column. Awesome, so that was a quick introduction to fractions. In our next lesson, we're going to look at what equivalent fractions are. So make sure you stick around for that. But today we want to remember that a fraction is an equal, it's a very important word in fractions, part of a whole. And we can show fractions of tenths in the place value chart. The number at the top of a fraction, so this number here, would be our numerator and the number at the bottom of the fraction, this number here, would be our denominator. Remember that denominator shows us how many we've split our whole into and the numerator is how many we're counting. Okay, great. Now we've just looked at where fractions sit on our number line and what a fraction actually is, let's have a little look at some common fractions that you should be able to recognize. Let's go. Okay, so what do we need to remember for this lesson? We need to remember that a fraction is just a part of a whole. So for example, if we had this whole apple here, a fraction would be when we cut it into equal parts. So here we have half on this side and half on that side. But there's lots of different fractions that we can make. Let's start by looking at half. Now this looks a bit of a fancy way of showing a fraction, doesn't it? With this one on the top and two on the bottom. So let's learn what that means. Well, the number on the bottom, we call this the denominator. And what that tells us, it tells us how many our half has been cut into. So if we look back to our apple, it means that we had our whole apple and we've cut it into two equal pieces. And then the number on the top, the numerator, that tells us how many pieces we're looking at. So we're looking at this one piece here. Therefore, this pink shaded area is one half. So if we imagine a number line, I've got a very small part of my number line here, starting with zero and going to one. But remember, our number line could go on forever this way, and it could also go on forever into the negative numbers. This is a very small part of our number line. Half is actually right in the middle here of our 0 and 1. Because if you think about our apple again, if we had no halves, that would mean we had 0. And then if I had 1 half, that would mean that I'm in the middle and I have 1 half. Or if I had 2 halves, that would be the same as saying I have 1. But obviously circles are not the only way we can show half. If we look at our square here, I could show half by cutting a line down the middle. That would show that I have half on either side. Or what I could do is I could cut my line diagonally to diagonally, and I would have one half on either side. Or what I could do is I could cut my square in half and half again, and I could say that you have this square and this square. Well, that's also showing half, isn't it? You have half of the squares that are available. Or our final way of looking at what half is, is we can look at half of an amount. And in this case, we have an amount of marbles. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight marbles. We want to try and find half of them. So the way I want to think of it is, all of these marbles together is one group of marbles, if I'm going to split them in half, I need to make two piles. And I can make two piles by simply cutting down this line here and having two equal piles of four. Let's check. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, 
three, four. So half of my eight marbles here would be this four right here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Have you clicked that subscribe button yet? If you've not, what are you doing? Do it now. Go on, press it. Do it. Thank you. Okay, but let's look at another fraction. This is another fraction that we should get familiar with. This is the fraction one quarter. And let's remember what we need to do. The denominator, the number at the bottom, tells us how many I'm going to split my whole into. So I have my whole apple, but I'm going to split it into four, because that's what my denominator tells me to. And then my numerator, the number on the top, tells me how many I have. And I have one quarter. So I have one little section up here. And again, looking at my square, I could do this a number of different ways. I could cut down the middle and then through the middle and give myself one quarter. Or I could go from the diagonal corners and give myself one quarter like that. There's lots of different ways I could make this shape into quarters. Looking on my number line, I would have to see that my zero is here, my one is here, so therefore one half is in the middle, like we saw in the last slide. So where does one quarter fit? Well, we can see that one quarter is like saying half of a half. This was my half, all of this side here, and one quarter is half of half again. So one quarter would go halfway between my zero and my half. Or if I'm trying to find one quarter of these marbles, I can see that I have eight again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So when we have this group of eight marbles, if I want to find a quarter, I've got to split them into four equal groups. And I can see that I can do that by putting two together. That would be one group, two groups, three groups, and four groups. So one quarter would be two marbles. Our last fraction that we would like to try and learn is what one third is. And again, it's the same principle. All it means is that we've cut our whole into three. And there's a fancy way of doing this with our pizza. We can cut down from the top into the middle and then split out to the sides. That gives me even one thirds. And I can see that one third is valued like this. So it's more than a quarter, but not as much as half. If I'm doing that with my square, I can make three equal columns and have one third colored in green. And on my number line, one third means that I've split my one into three. So I would have one section, two sections, and three equal sections, meaning that the green section is worth one third. And a third of my balls means that I'm putting them into three equal piles, and three equal piles here means that I have three in each. This fraction is a little different. This fraction has a different numerator. Now I have a three on my numerator. So this fraction says three quarters. So it means that I've split my whole into quarters, but this time, rather than looking at just one quarter, which would look like that, I need three of them. This would be two, and then three quarters. And again, with my square, cutting it into quarters, or four, and then I'd have one, two, three of them. On my number line, I'd have to remember that this is my half. One quarter would be over here, so therefore, if I have one quarter, the next section would be two quarters, and then the next section would be three quarters. So three quarters would come all the way to my gold line here. What if I wanted to find three quarters of an amount? Well, in this case, I have nine marbles. Well, in this case, I have eight marbles. So to find three quarters, I need to put them into four equal groups again. So I've got one, two, three, four equal groups. But three quarters would be one, two, three of those groups, which is six marbles. So three quarters is another really important fraction to understand. Let's look at what to remember. Fractions are an equal part of a whole. We can find fractions of a number, shape, or even a quantity. And there are three fractions, that's meant to say you, should recognize one half, one quarter, 
one third. And then if you're super smart, you might want to start recognizing three quarters two. Awesome, so that's what fractions are and some common fractions. Now let's look at where we, now let's look at something a bit more complicated. Let's have a look at how to find fractions of an amount and learn exactly what this means. First, we'll look at unit fractions. Now, the very first thing we need to remember today is that fractions are just a part of a whole. If you didn't watch the introduction lesson to fractions, go back on the channel and find that lesson first. But essentially, all we need to know is that fractions are just a part of a whole. And today we're looking at something special. We're looking at unit fractions. And what a unit fraction is? A unit fraction is when we have a one as our numerator, the number on the top. So that brings me to the first point that we need to remember. When we're looking at a fraction, for example, this one sixth over here, we have two numbers. The number on the top is called the numerator and the number on the bottom, the denominator. The denominator tells me how many I've split my whole into. So I have my whole pack of marbles here and I've split them into one, two, three, four, five, six. And the numerator is how many we're trying to focus on. So in this case, one. So let's look at what our question is asking us in this first example. It says, find one sixth of these marbles. Now, this first one's pretty easy because we actually only have six. So my denominator is the same amount that we have when we've split our marbles up. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I don't need to do any extra maths there. So to find the quantity, to find how many of these marbles one sixth is, all I need to do is color one of them and understand that therefore one of them is now green, so my answer to what one sixth of these marbles is, is just one. But question two is a lot harder, because look, we have find one third of these marbles, and I have a lot more than just three. If I had these three, it would be very easy. I could just simply color one of them and get the same answer as one. But it's not. I have more than three. So my first job now I have to split these into three equal groups. So how can I make three equal groups? Well, I'm going to make three circles. One, two, three. These are my sharing circles. And then I'm simply going to put these marbles inside my three sharing hoops. So I'm going to put this one in here. I'll put the number two in here, three in here. Carry on just like this, six and seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 and 12. Now there's something I need to check. I need to make sure I have the same amount in each of my sharing hoops. So I have one, two, three, four, good. One, two, three, four and one, two, three, four. Perfect, so I know I've shared these evenly. And now because I've shared them into three equal piles using my denominator, remember my denominator is what tells me how many piles I need to make. To find out how many is one third, all I'll do is count one of my sharing circles. How many do I have in here? Well, I have one, two, three, four. So therefore, finding one third of these marbles equals four. Simple. But sometimes we don't have marbles. Sometimes we just have a question. This, this question says, find one fifth of 25. Well, if I don't have marbles, I can still make them using a spare bit of paper or a bit of my board here. So how many marbles do I have? I have 25 and I'm trying to find one fifth. So the most important starting position is my denominator here. So I need to share my 25 marbles evenly between five groups. So I'm going to draw my five circles. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm simply going to share my 25 marbles evenly between these five sharing circles. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. 
6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Let's just quickly check that they all have the same amount. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Good. So we know that each one has 5. Therefore, when I'm finding out how many is in one fifth of these amounts, I can just focus on one circle and see that I have an answer of 5. Easy, right? Let's look at what to remember. Unit fractions are fractions where the numerator, the number on the top, is a 1. When we're trying to find a fraction of an amount, like today's lesson, we use the denominator, the number on the bottom, to create equal groups. So for this example, I would need three circles because I have a denominator of three. So then I'm going to count how many is in each group and then simply look at the numerator to tell me how many groups I want to count the total for. And that's going to give me my answer. Your turn. Find one quarter of these marbles. So I have one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen marbles. I want you to tell me what one quarter of them are. If you're struggling, go back to the beginning of this video and watch it again. I promise the second time it makes a lot more sense. Okay, cool. Now we've looked at unit fractions. Let's learn what a non-unit fraction is and see the same process with non-unit fractions. Let's go. Okay, first, the first thing we need to remember is that fractions are a part of a whole. So when we're talking about fractions, we're talking about values that are less than one. And we have this fancy little name here, non-unit fractions. This is the second of two lessons. If you've not looked at the unit fractions lesson, I would suggest you stop this video and watch that lesson first, because you might need to know some of those skills before you understand non-unit fractions. But essentially, a non-unit fraction is a fraction, let's look at this one here, where the number on the top is more than one. So in this case, two, and in this case, we have a three. And working out fractions of amounts with a non-unit fraction means we have one extra step. So let's have a look at this first question. It says, find two-thirds of these marbles. Okay, well... What do we need to do first? Well, we need to remember what our fraction stands for. And the number on our bottom is what we call the denominator. And this tells us how many we need to split our whole, so in this case our whole amount of marbles, it tells us how many we need to split them into. We can see we have groups of three, because our denominator is a three. And then the number on the top, we call this the numerator. And this then tells us how many of those groups of three we need to add up and look at to get our final answer. So that might sound a little bit complicated. Let's see it in practice. So we can see I have one, two, three, four, five, six marbles. And to find two thirds of them, I need to split them into three equal piles. So I'm gonna put my three sharing circles out. One, two, three and then I'm going to simply share them into these three circles. So I'll put number one in here, number two in here, number three in here, number four back in the first one, number five in the second, and number six in the third. And then the first job I need to do is just make sure I have the same amount in each one. I have two in here, two in here, and two in here. So I've done that right. But then my question asks for what two thirds are. So this would be one third, because this is one of the circles. So therefore, two thirds would be two of the circles. This is two thirds, because each of those little circles is equivalent to one third. So to get two thirds, I need to count two of the circles. So how many marbles do I have in two of these circles? I have one, two, three, four. So my total answer is four. One third of six equals four. Awesome. Let's look at this second one. 
find three quarters or three fourths of these marbles. Well, let's count how many I have first. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. So I have sixteen. So my question is find three quarters of sixteen. So remember what we need to do first. We need to look at our denominator, right? quarters or fourths. So I need four sharing circles. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to simply share my marbles between these four sharing circles. So this first one will go in here. Second, third, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. And the ninth one will come back in the first. Tenth in the second. Eleventh in the third. Twelfth in the, th in the fourth. Thirteenth back in the first. Fourteenth back in the second. Fifteenth in the third. And sixteenth in the fourth. And again, let's just check we have the same amount in each one. I have four here, four here, four here, and four here. Good, so I know I've not made any small mistakes. And now I need to understand that each of these circles is one quarter. So to find out what three quarters is, I can't just count one circle. I have to count three circles. And in these circles, I can say I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I have 12 marbles, meaning my answer to finding 3 quarters of these marbles equals 12. Awesome. But sometimes we don't have marbles. Sometimes we just see the question like this. Find 3 fifths of 25. And this looks so much harder when we don't have those marbles. But remember, we can still use scrap paper or my screen around me to help me. So I'm going to draw and I'm going to see it in practice. So how many do I have? I have 25 and I'm trying to find out what three fifths are. Remembering that my five is the denominator, meaning that's the amount I'm going to share my 25 between. So I'm going to share it between one, two, three, four, five. And I want to count three fifths. So I'm going to be looking at these three circles here. Now I'm just going to share my 25 out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. But remember, I don't just want to count how many is in one circle. I'm looking for these three circles. And I have 5, 10, 15. So my answer to 3 fifths of 25 equals 15. And I got there by drawing out my marbles and my sharing circles. Let's look at what to remember. A non-unit fraction are fractions where the numerator, the number at the top, is more than 1. And we use the denominator, the number at the bottom of our fraction, to create equal groups, and then we just share our quantity out and then count how many is in the numerators. That will give us our total answer. Your turn. Find two quarters or two fourths of these marbles. Press pause on the video now. Take your time. Good luck. Whoa, there's so much learning going on there. Now, I would say this next part is one of the most important aspects of fractions. We're going to start to look at equivalent fractions. Equivalent means it's the same value, but might look a little bit different. But let's learn it in the lesson. Let's go. Okay, so the first thing we need to think about is step one. Equivalent means the same value. So it means we've got a fraction, for example, this one half. But we make it look different by giving it different numbers. But we keep it the same value. And to do that, we can use multiplication and division. So that might sound confusing. Let's learn. Now, the first thing to learn is what our two numbers are called on our fraction. So if we look at this fraction here, we have one half. Well, the number on the top, in this case a one, is called our numerator. And the number on the bottom is called our denominator. So understanding these two terms right at the start of this is really important. Now, like I say, an equivalent fraction 
holds the same value but will have different looking numerators and denominators. Now let's use these two chocolate bars, our bar models over here, to show what I mean. So if we make this first chocolate bar a half, which is what we've got here as our example, we would cut our chocolate bar down the middle and create two equal halves. Remember, fraction has to be equal. So my blue half is the same as my pink half. But that's not the only way we could have chopped this chocolate bar. What I could have done is chop it into four equal parts. So cutting in half and then cutting these halves into half again. That would mean that each of these sections is worth one quarter. We can see that each of them is the same and they each hold the value of one quarter. Now if I wanted to have as much chocolate bar in this second one as I had in the first one, I would have to not have one quarter, but I would need to have another one too. So I would have two quarters and we can see that my blue section is the same value, the same amount. But in this fraction, we were cut into quarters, so my denominator was quarters, and I had two of them to make my equivalent fraction. So therefore, one half is equivalent to two quarters. So two quarters is an equivalent fraction. And we could keep going. I could make another chocolate bar down here, but this time I could chop it not just into quarters, but into eighths by cutting all of these quarters into half again. That means each of these individual sections has a value of one eighth. Well, how many eighths do I need to get to my half, which will be all of this blue section? Well, I need one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, and four eighths. So one half equals four eighths. So this is one way of looking at it, by drawing these individual pictures, but step two said that I could use multiplication and division. Let's see what that means. So if I start again with my one half, and let's put it into this first chocolate bar, I have one half, which means I have this shaded area here, but I know that if I had cut my pizza or my chocolate bar or whatever it is into four, that I would actually have two quarters. So one half, is equivalent to two quarters. So let's look at how we can use multiplication to help us understand this a bit clearer. Let's have a look at our denominators here. Well, I started with two and I ended up with a four. So how did I get from two to four? Well, I multiplied it by two. And let's have a look at our top numerator. I started with a one and I ended up with a two. And how did I get from one to two? Well, I also multiplied by two. And because we've done the same to the bottom as we have done to the top number, or the same to the numerator as we have to the denominator, by multiplying it by two, we are going to end up with an equivalent fraction. This part might sound a bit confusing because we haven't got these bar models to look at and check, but let's have another go. Let's see what happens if I multiply my two, this time by four. Well, two times four is eight. Okay, well remember, what I do to the denominator, the number at the bottom, I have to do to the numerator if I want it to stay equivalent. So one times four equals four. Okay, four eighths is my equivalent fraction. And I can check that on my chocolate bar over here by cutting my chocolate into eight. So here we go. There we go, I have eight equal parts. And I think that four of them, so one, two, three, four, is equivalent to half. Well, I can see that it is. Good job. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If you're not a subscriber yet, make sure you press that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. Thanks very much. Let's get back to the video. Let's look at a different one. Let's look at two sixths. So two sixths on our chocolate bar would look like this. I've cut my chocolate into six and I have one, two of them. Okay, well, let's see if I can make some equivalent fractions. Let's see if I cut my chocolate bar this time into 12, which you can see I've done by just putting another line horizontally through my chocolate bar. So each of these little sections is worth one twelfth. 
So how many twelfths do I need to be equivalent to my two sixths? So I'm going to draw this little box here so we know how much I need. Well, I'm going to need one, two, three, four. So therefore, four twelfths is equivalent to two sixths. And let's check that by checking our multiplication is correct. So how do we get from six to 12? We multiply by two. And how do I get from two to four? I multiply by two. So because we multiply the numerator by two and the denominator by two, we know it has to be equivalent. Awesome job again. But so far we've only looked at multiplication. Let's see how we can use division to find equivalent fractions too. So I'm going to draw my two sixths again in this top box. There we go, I'm going to get my one, two sixths, good. But I want to try and divide my fraction and see if I can find another equivalent fraction. So let's divide my two by two. So two divided by two equals one. Now whatever I did to the numerator, I'm going to do to the denominator. So I'm going to do my six divided by two as well. That equals three. So I think one third is an equivalent fraction or has the same value. Let's see. This time I'm going to get my chocolate bar and I'm going to just cut it into thirds. There we go. Each of these sections is worth one third. Now I'm trying to find an equivalent fraction of two sixths. So it's going to be all over this part. And we can see that one third has the same value, or in other words, is equivalent to two sixths. Great job. Let's look at what to remember. Equivalent means that the fraction will have the same value. For example, one half has the same value as two quarters. If someone said to you, do you want one half of my pizza or two quarters of my pizza? It doesn't matter because it is the same. It just looks different. To make equivalent fractions, we can use multiplication or division. But remember, whatever we do to the numerator, we must do to the denominator to make sure it stays equivalent. Your turn. Have a go at answering these two questions and find a couple, which means maybe one or two, equivalent fractions for them. So find some equivalent fractions to four-fifths and find some equivalent fractions to one quarter. If you'd like to draw chocolate bars, go for it. Or if you'd like to just use multiplication and division facts, you can do that too. Put your answers in the comment section. I'm going to try and mark them all. Awesome. We're getting towards the end of the lesson now. Hopefully this is starting to make sense. If it's not, please feel free to go back and watch the various different parts before moving on. But right now, we're going to look at how to add and subtract fractions that have the same denominator. Let's jump into it. Now, what we want to remember in this example is that when we are adding and subtracting our fractions, the denominator will end up being the same. But what does that mean? Well, let's have a look at our first example. One quarter, add two quarters. We should know by now that the number on the top of any fraction is called the numerator. And the number on the bottom is called our denominator. And the denominator is how much we've split our chocolate bar or whatever it is into. So one quarter would mean that I've cut my chocolate bar into fours or quarters. And the one, the numerator, is how many we're looking at. So in this case, one quarter would look like this. Okay, and then we're going to add it to my second fraction here, which is two quarters. So again, I'm going to get my new chocolate bar, cut it into fours. But this time, instead of one quarter, I have one, two quarters. So when I'm adding them, I can simply just count how many quarters I have. So when it says here that the denominator will stay the same, what it means is you're adding quarters. Your quarter is here and your quarters are here. So you're adding quarters. It's almost like saying you're adding elephants. If you add one elephant to two elephants, you're always going to have elephants as an answer. You're going to have three elephants. You're not going to start having cheetahs or dogs. So in this case, it's exactly the same. 
one quarter added to two quarters is going to equal something amount of quarters. So my denominator will always be in quarters because that is what we're adding up. We're adding quarters. And let's check how many I have. Well, in my first chocolate bar, I have one quarter. That's my fraction here, one quarter. And in my second one, I have two quarters, one, two. So together, I have one, two, three quarters. So my answer to one quarter, add two quarters, is three quarters. Whoa, I'm going to stop the video right now. If you're not a subscriber, what are you doing? There's loads of learning you can do on this channel. Press the subscribe button right now, it really helps me out. Thanks very much guys, let's get back to the learning. Let's see if that works with subtraction. So my question now is 5 sixths minus 2 sixths. So I can see now my chocolate bar is always cut into sixths. So I'm working with sixths. It's 5 sixths subtract 2 sixths. Just like 5 elephants subtract 2 elephants. So my answer has to be in sixths. Now let's draw out our chocolate bars. Let's cut it into six. There you go, I've got six equal parts. And in the first fraction, I have one, two, three, four, five sixths. But then I'm taking away two sixths. So I don't need my second chocolate bar here because I'm not adding. I'm actually taking away. So what I'm doing is I'm removing two of these six. So I could remove this one and I could remove this one. I could take them away. And how many does that leave me with? Well, I have one, two, three left over. So my answer to five sixths, subtract two sixths, is three sixths. Now some bright sparks between you will start to notice that all we're doing really is keeping the denominator the same. And if I'm working in sixths, I end up with a sixth, and then I'm just using the operation on the numerator. Five subtract two equals three. Let's see if that works for the first one. We kept the denominator the same as a four, and then I just did one plus two equals three. So it's actually super simple. Let's look at a couple of harder ones, but without pictures this time. So if I have two eighths plus three eighths, I know I'm working with eighths. So I know my answer is going to be in eighths. And then all I need to do is add my numerators. Two plus three equals five. Two eighths plus three eighths equals five eighths. Let's have a look at the next one. We have six sevenths minus two sevenths. So I know my answer is going to be in sevenths. And then I can just do six minus two equals four. Six sevenths subtract two sevenths equals four sevenths. How easy is that? Remember, when adding and subtracting fractions, the denominator never changes. We can simply add or subtract the numerators. And if we want to, we can use pictures to check our work. Your turn, have a go answering these two questions. See if you can press pause on the video now and get the right answer. Put your answers in the comment section. Press pause now, good luck. Whoa, we're so close. This is our penultimate, which means our second to last lesson. We're looking at how to order and compare fractions. So putting them in order from say smallest to largest or saying which one is bigger than others and we'll learn how to do that. Let's go. Okay, so the thing we need to remember today is that the denominator splits our bar or splits our whole and then we're gonna count the numerator. But that might not mean much at the moment, so let's first understand what numerators and denominators are. So if we're looking at this first fraction, 2 7th, the number on the top, this is what we call our numerator. And the number on the bottom, this is our denominator. And what it essentially means is that the number on the bottom is how many we're going to split our whole into. So if we have our whole chocolate bar here, if we're looking at 7ths, as in our denominator is a seventh, it means we're splitting our chocolate into seven even pieces. So let's do that. There we go. So we have seven pieces that our chocolate bar has been split into. And our numerator means how many we're going to be looking at. So if it's got two sevenths, it means that we've got one, two of these individual sevenths. 
because each of these little sections is worth one seventh. So when we're ordering and comparing fractions, what we want to see is which one has the smallest and which one has the largest value and then we'll put them in order. So let's carry on breaking these fractions up. Let's look at question number two, one seventh. So again, I'm gonna split it into seven equal pieces. There we go, but in this one, I only have one seventh, so it means I'm only gonna color one of these sections, one seventh. And finally, with our last one, we have six sevenths. Six sevenths still means that we're gonna split it into seven. There we go, but this time, I have one, two, three, four, five, and six of them, with each one being one seventh. So now when we're ordering them, we want to put them in order of size. And let's say we're gonna go in ascending order, which means that we're gonna go from smallest to largest. So we need to put these fractions from the smallest to the largest. Well, which one has the smallest value? Well, if I was gonna have one of these chocolate bars, the one that has the least would be this one, my one seventh. I only get a very small little part of the chocolate bar. So my first fraction in order would be one seventh. Then, which is the next smallest, we can see I have two sevenths. So my next one would be two sevenths. And then the biggest one, the one with the greater value, has six sevenths. So when I'm ordering these three fractions, the correct order from smallest to largest would be one seventh, then two seventh, then six sevenths. And what we should be able to see is that that's pretty easy to see when our denominators are all the same. We have sevenths. So what we can really do is just look at the numerator and just see that this is only one seventh. So that's obviously a very small amount. Then we have two sevenths, a little bit more, and then six sevenths, nearly a whole chocolate bar. So when our denominators are the same, all we really need to do is look at the numerators and put them in order. So this way round, this is what we called the ascending order from smallest to largest, but we could have the opposite. We could have the descending order, which means that our numbers go from largest to smallest. So the descending order would therefore be six sevenths, then two sevenths, and then one seventh. Whoa, 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 guys, if you are not a subscriber, what are you doing? Press that subscribe button now so you don't miss out on any more learning. Let's get back to the video. Let's look at how we can compare these two fractions. And again, what we can notice is I have the same denominator in both. And when we come to comparing, we have three very important symbols that we might use to help compare. We have greater than, and we say this is greater than because the number on the left-hand side, let's imagine I have five here, would be greater than three. And we know which way round I want to put this little triangle thing, which we call the crocodile, because he would want to eat the bigger number. If we make this little triangle into a crocodile, he would eat the bigger number. Five is bigger than three. But it could be the other way round. I could have three on this side and five on the other side. And that would mean that three is less than five. And again, the crocodile would want to eat the bigger number. So this number sentence says five is greater than three, and this number sentence says three is less than five. But we also have another symbol. We have the equals symbol, because sometimes some things are equal. I might have five on one side, five is equal to three add two. They are both the same value. So therefore, the symbol would be equals. So let's put those three symbols over in this corner so we know where they are for later we're gonna end up using one of these in our circle here to compare my four sixths to my three sixths. But let's first of all see which one's gonna be bigger or smaller. So again, I'm gonna use my denominator to help me cut my chocolate bar into one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. And again, on my second one, I have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. But on this first one, I have four of them. One, two, three, four. And on the second one, I only have three. One, two, three. So we should be able to see that the greater value, the bigger value, would be four sixths. So therefore, going back to my symbols, which one would the crocodile like to eat? Well, the crocodile will eat the bigger value. Therefore, my crocodile face will face the four sixth. And my number sentence reads, four sixths 
is greater than 3 sixths. And that's how to order and compare fractions. If we're ordering, we can use ascending, which means going from smallest to largest. Or we could use descending, which is from largest to smallest. And then when we're comparing, we could use the greater than, the less than, or the equal to symbol. Let's look at what to remember. First, we're going to check the denominators are all the same. Because when we're comparing, we want our denominators to be the same. Then we're going to draw a bar model to help us see the fraction. Just like we did here, we drew these bar models to help us actually see which one's greater. Then the numerator tells us how many to count in the fraction. Again, our 4 told us to colour 1, 2, 3, 4. And our 3 told us to colour only 1, 2, 3. Once we've done that, we can clearly see which one is bigger or smaller. So your turn. Here are three fractions. I want you to have a go at putting these in order from smallest to largest. Have a go at thinking about this now. Press pause on the video. Put your answers in the comment section. I'm going to try and mark them all. Good luck. Wow, we're doing so well. This is our last lesson now. Let's look at how we can use all these skills into word problems. Let's go. What is up everybody? Welcome back to the Math Guy. Today we're going to look at how to solve fraction word problems using a tactic called Rucksack. So let's waste no time, let's go. Okay, so what is Rucksack first of all? Well, Rucksack stands for... Well, Rucksack is made of an R, a U, C, S, A and C. And what it stands for is a little acronym to help us understand how to solve word problems. First, we're going to read then we're going to underline, then we're going to choose, which means we're going to choose which operation to help us solve the question. Then we're going to solve, then we'll answer, and then check our work. So let's do that with this question and tick them off as we go. So first of all, let's read our question. Jenny has two quarters of a pie, and Mark has one quarter of another pie. How much pie do they have all together? So, we just read it. Let's give ourselves a tick. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me just stop you there. Have you thought about subscribing to this channel? We're going to have daily videos that are going to help you with everything you need to know about maths. So, if you're not a subscriber, click that subscribe button and join our little family. Back to the video. Now, it says underline. Well, what do we need to underline? We want to underline the key information that's going to help us answer this question. So, I'm going to underline the two fractions. They're going to be really important, aren't they? Two quarters and one quarter. But I don't think that's everything, because if I have two quarters and I have one quarter, how do I know what to do with them? What do I put in the middle here? Well, I can see a key word here that's going to help me. It says all together. If I have three apples over here, and two apples over here, and I want to know how many I have all together, I'm going to have to add them together. So guess what? That's what we're going to have to do with our question here. So my operation is addition. So I've underlined, and I've chosen my operation. It's going to be addition. Now my next one says solve. Well, how do I solve two quarters add one quarter? Well, I could draw it, and I could draw a chocolate bar over here that has two quarters coloured in, one, two. And I could draw another chocolate bar underneath with one quarter, just like that. So how many quarters do I have all together? I can see I have one, two, three quarters all together. If you're not too sure about how to add and subtract fractions like that, Go back to another video on this channel to help you with that, where it specifically shows you how to add and subtract fractions. You can also find it at themathshelter.com. So, I've solved my question, and I got my answer, and I'm now ready to check. Two quarters, so I know I'm working in quarters. Is my denominator in quarters? Yes, it is. Good check. Add one quarter equals three quarters. So I created my bar model up here. I split it into four, into quarters. I got two, and I got another one, which gave me three quarters. Awesome. 
and look how helpful Rucksack was to help me solve that. Your turn then, have a go at answering this question and I would like you to use Rucksack 2 to help you solve this. Write Rucksack, write what each of the letters stand for and then see if you can tick them off as you solve this problem. I'll read it for you to start you off. Alice has four fifths of a bar of soap. She uses one fifth. How much does she have left? Good luck. Press pause on the video now. Put your answer in the comment section. Let's look at what to remember when solving word problems. Always use Rucksack. Rucksack is really helpful to remind you to do all the individual parts. Write your word problem into a number sentence, just like we did here. And then remember, we must always check your work to avoid making any small mistakes. Whoa, there you go. If you have just mastered this and you've done every part of this lesson, that means you can do everything in year three fractions. Easy, right? And it took less than an hour. But please watch this video again if you're still thinking little parts might be confusing. Going over it and over it and over it is how it's going to get stuck in your mind. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you though guys. If you've not watched any of the other Year 3 series lessons on the channel, you can see them all at mathshelter.com. But for now guys, I'm going to say goodbye and I'll see you in another video. Peace out.